Well, that was dramatic, but wasn't even realistic. To answer that question, let's take a closer look at quicksand. Imagine we have a container with a mixture of sand, clay and a bit of salt. Now slowly add the right amount of water until it becomes quicksand. Adding the water too fast will disturb the packing of the sand, resulting in a murky liquid. But how much water is the right amount? Eventually, the quicksand should contain somewhere between 30 and 70% of water, depending on the conditions. But why would this happen? No one but an evil genius would do it on purpose, right? Don't be silly. It happens naturally. Quicksand is quite common, for example, on the banks near the mouth of a river. Quicksand will form on the bottom of the river, and when the tide is out, the quicksand will surface. But how does quicksand really work? Why does it suck you in and then trap you? Well, quicksand works somewhat unintuitive, because it's a non-Newtonian fluid. This means that its viscosity changes as a force is exerted on it. The viscosity of a non-Newtonian fluid typically depends on the magnitude or the duration of the applied force. Quicksand, for instance, belongs to a subcategory of non-Newtonian fluids called shear thinning fluids. Shear thinning? Shear thinning fluids, such as ketchup and whipped cream, have a viscosity which decreases as the amount of stress acting upon the fluid increases. So that's why you sink into quicksand? That's right. Walking across quicksand is enough to decrease the viscosity so much that it allows you to sink into it. But why is quicksand a shear thinning fluid? To answer that question, we need to take a closer look at the composition of quicksand. We already know what materials are inside it, now we want to know how each component behaves. Right, so our mixture is a suspension of sand, clay and salt in water. The first thing you notice is that there is quite a bit of space between each grain of sand. The presence of clay mixed with water forms the gel and makes it possible for the quicksand to keep its structure, otherwise the sand would form a sediment. Walking across quicksand will put a stress on it, therefore the viscosity decreases. This means the sand is suddenly capable of collapsing, causing you to sink away. Your fruit will get trapped in the quicksand, as the salt causes the clay to flocculate. To flocculate? This means the clay forms clusters. They sink towards the bottom, where they rejoin the sand around your feet, causing a very densely packed layer of grains around your feet. And that's how quicksand traps you? Yes, indeed. Trying to pull one foot out now would require around 10,000 newton, which is equivalent to the force needed to lift a car. Well, that's quite a depressing way to die, drowning in something you can't even get out of. Well there, let's not start jumping to any conclusions now, shall we? Did you ever use the word drown? Well, no. No but... is right. That's because we haven't considered density yet. Humans, like most mammals, have an average density of 1 kilogram per liter, which is about the same as that of water. Sand and clay are much more dense. As a result, the quicksand is roughly twice as dense as water. So, since you're only half as dense, you won't sink all the way? That's completely right. It will sink quite far, but you would be able to keep your head above the quicksand easily. So, realistically, the guy in the movie shouldn't have drowned. Realistically, the scene would look more like this. Although it may be a bit unclear due to heavy shaking, the Tasmanian devil stops sinking after being submerged slightly over halfway, so you wouldn't be completely submerged in the quicksand. This doesn't mean quicksand isn't dangerous. For example, if you get stuck when the tide is out, you could drown when the tide returns. It is also possible to die from dehydration if no one finds you in time. 